So um, focusing on oh, barnacles, mussels, and copper, and basically what are the, the things that we're concerned about when we're talking about in water cleaning um, from a biosecurity perspective and from a chemical contamination perspective. Uh, so really quick um, summary from vessel biofouling, what's at risk? Um, risk to the ships, um, potential corrosion issues, um, drag-induced fuel consumption, um, biofouling is expensive, and we kind of covered that earlier this morning if you were here. Um, it increased, increases um, fuel consumption and operating costs, and it increases greenhouse gas emissions because ships are burning more fuel. Um, and then there's the obvious non-indigenous species concerns, um, one of the reasons that we're all here. Uh, biofouling, how is it managed? Um, Brian did a good job of talking about how vessel owners and operators use anti-fouling coatings and anti-fouling systems to try to prevent biofouling from occurring on vessels. Um, other types are marine growth prevention systems that are often used inside of either sea chests or um, further up the the internal piping network to prevent things from growing um, and clogging pipes as their, the ships need to move water for engine cooling and firefighting and filling valve tanks. Um, but biofouling still accumulates. So um, there are other reactive measures that are, are used from time to time, and the primary one is in water cleaning. Um, and then there are some other approaches that are partially preventive, partially reactive, um, called grooming. Um, the concept is basically clean early and often so that you're only cleaning off a fine layer and you don't really have to scrub very hard to remove what's there. But I want to focus on in-water cleaning because the next several talks are going to talk about this. Um, what are the environmental risks from, envir from uh, in-water cleaning? So obviously, when the traditional way of cleaning in water is um, using systems like this where the organisms and whatever else is on the hull are released into the water column. Um, so we're concerned about the organisms that are being released. We're concerned about the heavy metals in the biocide coatings that are being released as well. Um, so just wanted to, before we jump into all these issues in water cleaning, what is it really? And there's a variety of different methods and a variety of different mechanisms that are used. Um, a lot rely on um, brush carts and systems like this where there are rotating scrubbing brushes that are driven over the hull and removing what's there. Um, a whole variety of different brush types um, from think soft brushes like nylon to really hard metal that can scrape off even hard fouling. So when we talk about it, it can be the whole gamut from soft to hard scrubbing. Um, there could be water jets, um, high pressure water, um, intended to remove what's, what's growing instead of having to actually scrub. There's a system out there that uses heat. So they pull water in and run it through a boiler on top of a barge and then send it back down and slowly treat um, with heat. and. This system that's using this doesn't really remove the organisms, it basically just treats in place, and it's usually intended for um, early stage biofilm. And then there are others that rely on contactless cleaning. Um, so instead of actually scrubbing the things off the hull, we create a, basically it's a vortex that we pull them off the hull. So uh, there, talked earlier, there's traditional way of doing it, um, just cleaning and having everything else be dispersed into the water column and the seafloor below. Um, but there are more and more of these recapture systems now that collect that debris, pass it through some sort of filtration prior to being discharged. So the filtration is intended to remove the particles and in some cases the dissolved copper or dissolved metal. <coughs> um, and then there's the, the heat treatment only that I mentioned earlier. So again, the environmental risks that I talked about earlier, non-indigenous species, chemicals, and biocides, um, it's pretty obvious when you look at one of these traditional types of systems, it's all going into the water. Um, but then what are the risks to both chemical and non-indigenous species related risks that are coming from the um, in water cleaning systems that capture and treat the debris? Obviously we're minimizing the risk there but to what level? So, um, I'm not gonna go into detail on this because I think David is on the next slide, but it's basically a schematic of one of these types of systems. On the left is a vessel's hull, there's a scrubbing unit, and the water is pumped up and goes through a series of filter filters before being discharged back into the water. So when we're 
thinking about how the risks are realized, there's obviously risks during the cleaning process. What's escaping containment when the actual system is being driven along the hall? Um, is it capturing 100% of what's removed, 90%? Um, what level do we feel is appropriate? And are, what level of risk are we willing to deal with? And some of the things that we'll probably hear about later. Um, upon discharge of the effluent, how low do we have to filter in terms of a micron level of organism? Like, are we expecting these systems to treat to 50 microns, to 12 and a half microns, to 10 microns, to zero, to remove everything? Um, these are some of the questions that we'll be hearing about. And then also during the filtering process, a lot of the organisms and the, the biocides are captured by these filters and what happens to those filters and how are they disposed of? So um, that's basically all I wanted to do was kind of introduce the topic. Um, how do we reduce the risks? Um, and ideally through careful regulation that takes into account both the non-indigenous non species risks and the chemical contamination risks. 